Hello, everyone. Um, how many people in here are still working their job and uh, trying to figure out how to become a digital nomad? Anyone? Two people? Oh. Uh oh. Well, uh, this is uh, this presentation is more about uh, becoming a digital nomad with uh, very little skills. Um, hopefully, uh, maybe some of the designers and developers will also learn some things. Um, all right, we'll get started. Uh, so the question that, that I had was, how do I make any money from anywhere in the world? Uh, how do I have more uh, free time than work time? That's key. Uh, and uh, how can I do it with not many skills or experience right out of college? The answer is simple business websites. Uh, uh, you can sell them for you know, $3,000 and uh, only you can get the, the process down to create them in uh, three to five days. Uh, and if you're living in somewhere like Asia, where you can live really well for $1,500 a month, then uh, you can live for two months with uh, only a week's worth of work. Um, and uh, this kind of uh, project, you can do virtually anywhere in the world. So, uh, so since uh, October, I've been uh, traveling around in Asia, making about uh, $1,600 a month uh, on average. Uh, I really only worked on client work for about two of those months, and the rest of the time I did whatever I wanted with, with my time. I worked on some of my own personal projects and uh, traveled around and uh, spent my birthday on a tropical island. Um, this is a little long, but basically uh, I did an internship uh, nine to five in a cubicle. It sucked. Uh, I knew I was going to get fired, but I just kept sticking around for that paycheck. Uh, but when I did get fired, I was like, all right, I can't work for anyone. I, I need to work for myself. So I really don't need that degree anymore. The, the, really, the reason I was there was to get a job. Um, and uh, so I, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, about eight months, learning how to be a freelancer while not really being, uh, having any web development or design skills. Um, and then uh, once I started making some money with that, then I took off and flew to Asia and, and traveled around. Um, so yeah, in, in those eight months, I kind of learned the, the most common websites uh, that you'll see, um, the website projects. Uh, and I, I started out selling a website for $400. Uh, and then uh, went from there and up to 3000 for the same basic website. Um, so these are the, the types of sites that I generally saw. Uh, you have like the, the brochure site that you can uh, do with a template that's very simple. Uh, the brochure site that's more of a custom design that you need some skills to uh, create. Uh, the enterprise sites, which are a lot more work and a lot of custom code. And then uh, the web apps, which includes like e-commerce and the more advanced web projects that you'll see out there. Um, and uh, for digital nomads, the, the, usually the, the metric that matters is the, persona, the percentage of free time that, that you have. Uh, and I found that these brochure sites that you can create with a pre-made template that you buy on the internet, uh, they have the highest percentage of free time that you earn. So if you make $3,000 with a site that only takes you a week to make, you have 85% free time in Asia. Whereas... Uh, <laughs> Whereas uh, these other projects will have a lower amount of free time. <laughs> so how do you go from not having any skills and uh, not having any money to making uh, $3,000 for, for one site? Uh, first step is to build yourself a, a beginner portfolio. Uh, make a couple of sites. Uh, for some friends or something. Uh, then uh, the most important step is to get your first customer. That's the hardest step. Um, Odesk is a really easy place to find customers, but they don't pay much. Uh, work with your clients in person if you can. That's pretty important to, to kind of learn and understand how clients think and what they want and, and their mindset. Uh, and, and charge more every time you do a project. This allows you to grow and grow and grow and, and build your pipeline so you have deals coming to you 
while you're uh, drinking coconuts in, in Thailand. Uh, some tips for this is uh, you want to under-promise and over-deliver. So you uh, say, uh, they say, how long does the pro is the project going to take? Uh, you tell them uh, one month when maybe it'll only take uh, one week um, so that they're pleasantly surprised when the project is done much earlier than they expected. Uh, just in time learning. The first project I did for $400, I didn't really know how to do WordPress sites yet. Uh, I just, uh, I closed the deal and then I learned while I did the project. Uh, and that's pretty close to fake it till you make it. Uh, you, you have to exude the persona that you know what you're talking about in order to get deals. It's a catch-22. Uh, just make sure that you learn really quickly so you don't uh, promise something that you can't do. Uh, and the biggest thing is uh, getting over your own psychological barriers. So things like uh, imposter sy syndrome where uh, you, you, you think that maybe you don't belong or, or you're a fraud. Uh, that's a really important one to get over. And, and once you do that, you'll get a lot more confidence. Uh, so yeah, my, my, first, my first portfolio was uh, just a bunch of sites for, for friends, bands, uh, an author, visual artist, Etsy artist. Really simple sites that uh, I, I did them for free to build the portfolio. Uh, like I said, my first client was a, a $400 project. It was a lot, a lot of work. They wanted UX analysis, they wanted design, they wanted custom code, they wanted copywriting. And I had to learn all of these skills while I did the project, which took me over one month. And that was not something I could sustain. My second client was, uh, it required a lot of really advanced CSS, which I also had to learn on the job. Uh, also not enough money to sustain me. Um, so you charge more every time and, and you begin to find limits, you begin to see the different types of clients uh, and you'll begin to see the difference between a bad client and a good client. Uh, a bad client will want the world and they want to give you $200. A good client will want something simple and uh, they just want to pay someone to take care of it. They don't really, uh, they're not really worried about the cost too much as long as it's somewhat reasonable to their expectations. Filling the pipeline, this is important so you can get the deals while you're in uh, Thailand drinking the coconuts. Uh, you do the, the basic plan is to go out, network, build a referral pipeline, uh, and, and find some partners. Online directories are um, an interesting one. I haven't had success with these, but I know people that have, uh, like on Yelp. Uh, they get two to three hot leads every day from Yelp, but it's really hard to get on there because they don't allow many companies on there anymore. Networking. How to win friends and influence people was a huge uh, influence on me for this. Um, going out and, and taking in more interest in other people than you do talking about yourself. Uh, being friendly, helpful, uh, asking about you know, how their business is going, seeing if you can provide any value to their business for free. Uh, just any, any tips that you can. Uh, this will build huge social capital for you and allow you uh, to quickly make friends and, and referrals. Uh, building the referral network. There's a lot of uh, bad competition out there. They may be good at their craft, but they're not good at communication and they're not good at managing the client's expectations. Uh, the most common complaints that I've heard about other designers and developers is disappearing for periods of times, being unhelpful. Uh, maybe uh, the client wants to change something and they give them an attitude about it. Um, and they say like all sorts of industry jargon like HTML, CSS, and the code, and the server this, and blah, blah, blah. Clients don't understand that usually. They want things explained to them very simply in everyday language. And if you can be super helpful and friendly, that will get you above most of your competition and it'll get referrals coming your way rather than your competition. Partners is an interesting avenue. Uh, if you have uh, skills such as design or programming, this is probably a better method. Um, 
because partnering with designers, marketers, or developers, uh, usually there's going to be bigger projects, more on the enterprise level. But at the same time, these agencies will want someone that they can trust to refer the smaller projects that's in the 2,000 to 3,000 range uh, that would be ideal for you. So if you can make the relationship there where they, uh, they trust you and they can refer you these smaller projects that they don't want, then that can be a good source of uh, referrals for you. Closing the sale. This is important because this is how you make money. Uh, so, first uh, you get the lead in your inbox, and uh, it, since it's a referral, it's going to be a hot lead, they're, they're already interested in working with you. So you go into a discovery meeting, uh, you discover the goals of the project, what do they want to do, what are they trying to do, what, is what they're asking for the actual correct solution for what they're trying to do. Um, and from, from that you uh, help them create the, the site map or the information architecture, the, the, the general structure of the site. Uh, and you figure out what kind of design aesthetic they want. Uh, do they want a modern site? Do they want um, something else? I, I only do modern sites, so. Uh, and uh, before you give them a proposal, you should establish a conceptual agreement where you've uh, agreed on all the various uh, parts of the site and you've already talked about pricing. Uh, Sending a proposal with the price in it before you've talked about it is a really uh, good way to really turn a client off and, and get them to not take your proposal. Uh, for the proposal, you don't need to go crazy with it. Um, nobody's going to sue you. Uh, it's, it's a $3,000 site. It's, it's really not a big deal. You don't have to define every little thing. Just keep it simple. Make sure that what you discussed is reiterated in the proposal. Uh, and uh, you've already talked about it in the meeting, so it's just rehashing it. Um, most important thing is to get paid before you start. Clients will sign a proposal and then change their mind a week later because they haven't paid you yet, so it doesn't count. Uh, so just wait until you get that first check because that's a real solid indicator that they are actually interested in working with you. That's what really counts. So making the site, like I said, you can make a site in three to five days uh, very easily. Uh, first step, first step is uh, domain hosting and installation. Uh, you should, if you don't already know how to configure domains, you should definitely learn this uh, because that is really confusing for clients and you need to know how to handle this. Um, shouldn't take you more than a week to figure it out, but it's definitely important to know. Uh, if you can convince them to sign up for WP Engine at $30 a month, do that and give them your affiliate link because then that's an extra 150 bucks for you. Uh, otherwise, I like a small orange or liquid web for uh, WordPress hosting. Content. The most important part of the site is the content, not the design. The design is informed by the content. So it's important to know who's writing the content. Is it the client? Usually they want to, but they may not be good copywriters. Um, the, the site will be better for them if you can convince them to work with a professional copywriter. Uh, if you're writing inclined, then that's a service that you can offer. Uh, but otherwise, you'll meet uh, plenty of writer friends traveling around Asia doing uh, something similar to you. <laughs> Um, general guidelines that I give clients when uh, trying to figure out the information architecture and the content for the site is one page should have one goal or purpose. Uh, of course, the, the modern like homepage scrolling design is kind of the exception to that, but when you're having a multi-page site, every page should have one goal and not be cluttered with all sorts of different calls to action and headlines and uh, different things grabbing for your attention. Themes. Once you figure out the aesthetic that the customer likes, uh, you can go on ThemeForest and browse all of the themes that they have available there and find something that fits with the customer's desires. These themes cost you $50 and uh, 
they look amazing to the clients. They love it. Um, my favorite theme is Enfold from ThemeForced. It's pretty flexible and it kind of it has a back end kind of uh, drag and drop interface that makes creating the content uh, pretty easy. Optimize Press is another good one with a drag and drop maker uh, that's focused more towards internet marketers and landing pages. The plugins. There is a plugin for pretty much everything. You almost never have to do any coding, even with some light uh, additional functionality than a brochure site. Um, just Googling around, going to Stack Overflow, uh, searching the WordPress repository, um, even uh, looking at paid plugins, uh, you can usually find something that does exactly what you want it to do. Um, I offer uh, all, of my, all of the sites that I make, I, I let the clients know that they're secure sites. Uh, none of my sites have been hacked. Uh, it's just because I've installed this plugin, iTheme Security, and, and configured it. Um, that, that does, it's the 80-20 of securing your, your WordPress site. Uh, I also uh, reiterate to all of the clients that I provide speed enhancements uh, through the WordPress caching, also done through a plugin. Uh, and Gravity Forms is magic, absolute magic. If you have to do anything with a form, just use Gravity Forms. It does everything for you. And uh, if you're looking for other plugins, you can check them out on my uh, WordPress.org profile. All right, so you built the site. It's time to publish it. Uh, make sure that you get paid first, because uh, once you publish it, you don't really have much control over uh, influencing the, the payment timelines. And uh, you can go drink coconuts on the beach. That's all. <laughs> Any questions? Do you offer a service after the publishing? So if you have any questions or problems? I found that these, uh, this size project, they are very resistant to doing ongoing services. And if they do want them, they usually want them at a price point that makes it not worth my time. So I generally don't offer that. Um, I do include like one month of free updates and maintenance uh, after the project, uh, just because it's the right thing to do. There's going to be some changes that they want after you finish the project. And then uh, I let them know that there's an hourly rate if they want to have changes after that. Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, yeah, there, I mean, you can, uh, you can go into internet marketing and, and trying to do SEO or whatever, but I found that those venues are, there's a lot more competition internationally, and if you can build a, a, a local referral pipeline, there's much less competition because the rest of the world isn't there. Uh, what do you think about outsourcing the, the coding? Yes. That's, uh, that's actually what I'm doing now. Um, once you uh, want to move up the value chain and go to these bigger like enterprise projects, uh, hiring people on Odesk or Freelancer is a great venue, but you have to be very careful who you hire. Um, and there's uh, some hiring processes that can help you find uh, really good developers that you can outsource with. Um, for these things, uh, I know that there's um, like some services that will uh, help you create like the simple websites like this, but I found that the margin was pretty big and just the time that it took to explain the project was almost as long as it took to make the actual site. Whoever Patrick's, whoever Patrick's pointing to. Mars. Mars. So uh, when you say like uh, client pay you first, is it like the full sum or like 50%? Good question. Um, when I uh, send the proposal over, I give them two options. Uh, I say you can pay 50% right now on, on project initiation and 50% on a specific date. Uh, I don't say at the end of the project because that can last, that can drag on forever based on like one piece of content. So I say, all right, I'm gonna, fin I'm gonna finish this project in two months for sure, so you have to pay in exactly two months. Uh, and then the other option is they can pay in full upfront and get a five to 15% discount uh, depending on the project. Anyone else? One more last question. 
uh, how do you acquire new leads during your um, traveling uh, I, um, a lot of uh, my referrals are basically doing that for me. So I have like, um, I, I did uh, some work for an angel investor in the US. I did some really simple updates to his site a long time ago. And he was my biggest referral source. Uh, and he, of course, he's an angel investor. He has a lot of exposure. And people come to him about web stuff all the time. And he sends me all of these uh, small, profit, small projects that are high margin. Um, but also, I travel around to places like Berlin and meet new people and uh, get new projects. But you do no SEO or pay per click stuff, or uh, you're not so much into online marketing or web based lead generation? No, I, I know how to do these things, but it's not something that I want to provide uh, to clients. Um, it's a good recurring, recurring revenue source for sure. Uh, but, no, but for you, for your projects? Oh, for my projects? No, uh, just because there's so much competition. I just don't want to. I don't want to compete with the entire world on that. And you uh, pay your referral givers, or it's just no. I mean, uh, these projects are, are are so small in the business world that this is like they're just doing someone a favor by referring them to me, and they're doing me a favor by referring them to me. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep.